What's up, Meta Nerds? If you always wanted to see ion cannons used expertly, you'll love the Aggressor Class Star Destroyer. Of all the things Star Wars fans like to nitpick, like pronunciation or ship classification, I don't hear people complaining about my biggest pet peeve, the use of ion weapons in Star Wars. We see big capital ships slugging it out and starfighters launching torpedoes, or we see ships being paralyzed by ion weaponry. We see that tech like the massive ion cannon on Hoth exists, and how effective ion torpedoes can be from just a handful of Y-Wings. But we never really see this tech combined. Why not open with something like the V-150 Planetary Defender mounted right on top of your ship, and then fire an all-out volley from your turbo laser batteries? Well, the Empire also had this bright idea during the years leading up to the Battle of Yavin. This concept of combining an ion shot with a plasma bolt is realized in the Aggressor class Star Destroyer. Prototypes would have been built by Kuat Drive Yards, the same company that manufactured most of the Empire Star Destroyers. Its length was equal to the Imperial One class at 1600 meters or 0.99 miles, which is more than 10 times the length of the CR-90. At 711 meters or 0.44 miles wide, it was nearly 15 CR-90s across, or nearly one and a half Venators. And with a height of 400 meters or a quarter mile tall, it was nearly 12 times as tall as the CR-90, or 1.5 times the Venator. Four main engines and four secondary engines all worked to give it a top speed that was similar to the ISD, and it was equipped with a similar Class II hyperdrive. Shielding was provided via these generators up top, similar in placement to the ISD, though they were different models. But of course, the real technological difference was the fire-linked ion and plasma cannon. Think of each of these long sections as giant weapon generators, with the bulk of its interior just being dedicated to the weaponry. Two massive guns the size of a Star Destroyer, with the ion cannon up top and the plasma cannon below. To appreciate just how powerful each of these weapons would be, look at the cross-sections for the V-150 Planetary Defender Ion Cannon and the DBY-827 Heavy Turbo Laser Turret. The Hoth Ion Cannon was able to paralyze an ISD, and the DBY-827 is the strongest turbo laser on the Venator, capable of blowing through the thick hull armor on capital ships. So imagine how much more power could be generated when these two forms of weaponry are scaled up to this size. The only problem was that it put everything into these two guns, with just a single turbolaser battery on each wing, and thus it was incredibly vulnerable to starfighters and bombers. In fact, a squad of skilled bombers could easily dodge those big turbolasers and just deliver their payloads on the massive generators of the aggressor's weapons. The chain reaction that this would cause would blow the ship into pieces. In this way, it is kind of like a mini super weapon, and that it was incredibly powerful, but highly specialized, and should have some sort of protective fleet around it. The only reason why we didn't see this deployed by the Empire was because of the attack on the first Death Star. The aggressor's plans were being studied by staff on board the DS-1, but when the Rebels launched an attack over Yavin, some heroic Imperial made sure to store all of this ship's information onto a data pod. These data pods were like incredibly durable USB drives that had a long history of use by the CIS to ensure that their data wasn't lost during the Clone Wars. But this is where the Aggressor class's story takes a turn. Instead of being an implement of oppressive order, it became a tool of chaotic lawlessness. The Crime Lord Tiberzon arrived shortly after the Death Star's destruction and came across an interesting find. With his underworld connections, he was able to produce these Star Destroyers per the Imperial Blueprints. Seeing just how powerful this 1-2 punch was, Tiberzon loved the aggressor and even modified one to become his flagship. The Merciless added better shielding and a cloaking device, a terrifying combination of stealth and power. Oh, and of course, this badass crate Dragon artwork on the side. The widespread use of this ship earned it the name the Underworld Star Destroyer, and to address its weakness to bombers, they paired it up with the Keldabe-class battleship and Star Vipers. The consortium quickly found out that a single ion hit could eliminate the shields on an enemy capital ship, and it could even take large space station shields down to half. You can see why this came to be one of the most feared ships in the Galactic Civil War era. The consortium even learned to turn these guns towards ground targets, and then disintegrate the structures with a plasma round following up just a half second behind. And even when the ship was defeated, there was a final nasty little secret. Certain models were able to self-destruct when it became obvious that all was lost, and the explosion generated by setting off these massive reactors created a blast radius that could take out tons of starfighters and even capital ships. 
This unique weapon was one of the Empire's greatest losses, and something that must have driven Thrawn crazy, knowing that things like the Death Star and Super Star Destroyers took priority over the aggressor. After the destruction of the second Death Star, Zahn's capital ship, the Merciless, led an attack on Kuat Drive Yards in a successful raid that stole the unfinished Eclipse. Its legacy lived on past the fall of the Empire, but how many were still around during the time of the New Republic is still unknown. So that's it for its history, but you definitely want to hear these cool facts and behind the scenes stuff. It first appeared in the game Empire at War Forces of Corruption and was added into the Star Wars Complete Encyclopedia. Game files refer to these ships by their original name, the Crate Class, and Zahn's flagship was originally named the Peacemaker. Down in the comments below, let me know if you hope this ship returns back into canon. But that's it for the Aggressor Class Star Destroyer. If you want to connect with us, help support this channel, or get your own copies of the reference material used to make these videos, be sure to check out the links in the description. Special shout out to our supporters over on Patreon, but most important of all, remember, Always be sure to back up your prototype ships onto a datapod, and the Force will be with you, always.